for the What in God's name is going on in here? What was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Turn the fucking uh, beat up! What is that? What? What is that? What is that noise? What noise? Really, sir, there wasn't any noise. The Alpine's bumping, but I need the volume higher. Bring the motherfucking the motherfucking ruckus! Bring the motherfucking ruckus! Turn me on till I turn them on. Let's get it on. Stop banging on the damn furnace. You hear me now? This is the last time. Musical sound. Bring in the ruckus. You motherfuckers be giving me pounds. And still we must bring the ruckus to all you motherfuckers. What up, though? It's your boy Low Gross, also known as Uncle Skeetor, and you are tuned in to episode 237 of the Inaudible Ruckus podcast. Okay, I got Inaudible E Ray joining me, man. He riding shotgun. We're gonna discuss a lot of things, right? So, E Ray been making his circuit in the Dallas podcast scene. We're gonna get a little uh, recap of how that's been going. Uh, then we're gonna discuss LeBron and his GOAT status, which I don't even know why, you know, we we debating and disputing this, but we're gonna get into that. Um, then we're gonna talk about Bill Burr and his uh, monologue on Saturday Night Live. He offended some people, but hey, you know, you gotta have those tough conversations, man. That's what comedy is. And then, speaking of tough conversations, man, how y'all turn on Ice Cube? You feel me? Like, what did Ice Cube do to y'all? We're gonna talk about that, man. We're gonna get into that, amongst other things, right? We're also gonna talk about Dak's ankle exploding. You know what I'm saying? On, uh, on last Sunday and how the Dallas Cowboys need to do right by that man. Right. But don't get me riled up now. We'll save that for the show. We got much more to talk about. Y'all know how this is. I just get y'all to run down, but ain't no telling where the show going to go. OK, but you can keep up. Subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Um, no, no, no. Google Podcasts. My bad. SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Uh, I think we on Amazon Music now because Amazon doing podcasts. That's how you know. You got to get hit with the podcast because if Amazon doing it, man, it's, it's, it's done. It's already done. You feel me? Uh, but and then I need y'all because y'all need to check the updates and stuff. So me and Neezy have been doing the Skeeter mini episodes, right? OK, so you can catch the updates on those as well as when the regular show drops. So make sure you subscribe. OK, and go get you some naturally named moisturizer dual. So you go to inaudibleruckuscom slash shop right the merch is on there we got the franchise pack we still got the good, the good chemistry pack going we got the naturally named moisturizer duel on there also go to midnightclubmerch.com shout out to stevie d and my boy alex kane uh, shout out to the uncool urban podcast shout out to um smile shot tim uh the music impulse all of that okay the whole gang working man shout out to rico shout out to flea with uh blurred grounds man we doing big things over here okay we building just want y'all to know and appreciate y'all for rocking with us Okay, and everybody else out there, y'all know who y'all is. Appreciate y'all. Uh, but yeah, and then a word from our sponsors. You know, shout out to Muse Lux Esthetician Studio. So if women out there, if you're trying to get beautiful, you need your eyebrows done, you need your lashes done, you need a vajayshul, you feel me? Okay, and you're in the Detroit area, contact Muse Lux Esthetician Studios. They'll get you right. Okay, you know, holidays is coming up. You're trying to be sexy. It might be the first time you meet your man or his family and stuff. You know what I'm saying? He want to take you home to mom and, and see all the uncles. Say, hey, nephew. She killing the game, man. Her lashes look good. Cause that's what dudes be paying attention to. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to Gross Power Washing and Cleaning. Y'all know wintertime, especially in Detroit up there, man. Wintertime is coming. Okay, you need to get those leaves out your gutter. Because if it starts snowing, that start snowing, that stuff get packed in there, start raining and stuff, flooding, it could carry over to your roof. Your roof could cave in. And you don't want to be having Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner or whatever. And then like the roof cave in. So contact Gross Power Washing and Cleaning, man. They get you together. Tell them low sent you. Okay, and fellas, if you want to stunt for next summer and you're trying to get your car painted, you know what I'm saying, or you're trying to get it customized, get your bike and all that stuff done. All my bike riders out there, man, about that bike life. Okay, Coach Works Unlimited, man, they out here, right? So tap in, you know what I'm saying? They get you together, man. We can get you your new paint on your whip, and then you can let it sit, and then come next summer, hell, you can bring that shit out in the springtime, bro. It's gonna roll. You feel me? Um, but yeah, so my monologue before we get off into the show, I'm not Bill Burr. I'm not gonna offend you. I want to bring you in focus on you man it's easy to get distracted by what everybody else got going on man but if you've already i always preach to y'all about finding that one thing that like you're good at or that one thing you're passionate about lock in invest in it do all the research needed gather all the intel do whatever you need to do man build that plan and focus on it the key word is focus 
right you can't be out here getting sidetracked and doing what everybody else doing and jumping ship and then bouncing around and stuff man stay focused stay in the fucking saddle you feel me that's game though we about to get off into the show it's an audible ruckus motherfucker all right y'all you already know what time it is get ready for the most electrified man in podcast put your headphones on as we get ready to bring the ruckus motherfucker Give me the mic so I can take a whoop. Now the party didn't start, so I walked in, and I probably won't leave until the day ends. <laughs> check, check. I wish I could show you how delicious this shit is. Was it not It's fucking delicious. It's nah, nachos? she made a whole like vegan platter. I don't know what she did. This shit's oh, fantastic. Gosh. So she gathered up all the bark from all the trees in downtown Dallas. That's what all happened. that shit. Some some bark, some flowers, some dirt. This nigga. Just all that shit. Sprinkled a little parsley on it. And some garlic mm-hmm. pepper. Wanna see me do my dance? Uh, Probably put a whole lot of choppers in her ass. <laughs> all right, y'all. So this is episode two thirty seven. <laughs> I'm back. With the quasi bad guy who basically is a hitman for hire now. <laughs> He's just going around shooting up pods, man. What up, E-Ray? What up, though? What's good, brody? Slow motion, man. Um, So the rest of the Inauto Bros is out doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, this, we like the Avengers and shit. So it's, it's one of those things hey. where, like, you know what I'm saying? People got to go out to the, inter- the intergalactic uh, battles and uh, all across the galaxy <laughs> to save planets and shit. Shout out to Free. Shout out to Rico. Shout out to Smiles. So you're saying Gatman and Robin is back. Right, we can't fly. The OG. You ever see the meme where it's like when um when the when the <laughs> villain when the super villains can fly and shit, Batman and Robin just gotta sit on the ground and just be like, damn. He's like, ah oh, shit. Well, let somebody else get that. All right, we might as well record a podcast then. Um yeah. So no, nah, so let's jump into it, man. You you made your rounds uh, on, on a couple of different podcasts. I've used on the Inebriated Geniuses podcast last week. What was that like? Yes, Tell us sir. About that. How did it go? Man, salute to those guys. Uh, I got real. killed that shit. It was a very interesting um, pod, to say the least. I've officially feel like I'm an e- an inebriated genius. Look, I can't even say that shit. Okay. That's how that's how lit it was. We got there, got shit going. Really wasn't supposed to go that long, but the shit was cracking. Did you get cracked open a bottle? Though? Okay, I was about to say. Eight shots later, mm. niggas, we was we was rocking. Eight shots and of what? What y'all drinking? What was y'all drinking? Drinking uh, was it Crown Black? Oh, y'all tripping. Crown Black and Sprite, and I was like, oh, I am mad lit. And this is some good conversation. I was like, there, there's something to this. You you talk drunk as shit about fucking politics yeah. and, and just life. Shit's good, man. I, I appreciate it. So I do want to thank those guys for having me on. Um, we will be doing some cross some cross promotional oh, shit. Yeah, for and, sure, and for sure. Yeah, I was like, good good team over there. Good dudes. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed myself. I've gotten great feedback from the episode, and I think we did come upon some some dope ass life shit for two niggas that didn't even know each other when we started. Yeah, no, I thought it was dope. You know me, I'm I'm a I'm a, uh, a pod snob. Pod snob. <laughs> I'm a pod. Talk snob. about it. So like you know, everybody, oh, I want to get on your pod, or or you should be on my pod, or I got a pod. Check my pod out, and it's like yeah. You give him the Chrissy Teigen face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you, my man. What we used to say in high school, not you, my man. Like, nah. <laughs> but I checked it out and I thought it was dope. Like, I really did. And you know, I don't, I don't really fuck with too many people like that. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to be better. But like, I definitely, I would be willing to like, like collab with them in the future though. Because I, and not only that, but just hearing the passion and, and like the, the the respect that they have for the game, I think was real dope. And then mm-hmm. I know you, and I know being a student of, of the podcast shit, and like you know, saying so honing your craft, so watching y'all kind of like work together, like I thought it was art. You feel me? Like this shit is art, despite what y'all Appreciate think. You. Y'all think we be on here just talking, but like y'all don't understand like what all goes behind the scenes to make sure this shit be hitting. You feel me? The give and the go, the the takes, yeah. um, the studio experience. Again, I'm yeah. I'm still new to that, being in a studio and just kind of get it cracking. But you ain't you, know, you ain't a Zoom podcaster. You ain't just a Zoom podcast, nigga. You a real podcast, yeah. nigga. Now you be in the studio. I was gonna say, I does this. I does this, nigga. No. <laughs> 
No, but it, it was super dope. I was like, definitely want to um, kind of collaborate more in the future. I think great personalities just work. Yeah. Good conversation speaks for itself. And you know, add some add some alcohol to the mix, and you you got some fucking fire. E Ray the hipster and some alcohol. Yeah, and so and some great content, man. I loved it. Now, so. now I will say this: you was tripping, you was tripping though, because ain't no way in the world I'm doing <laughs> no eight shots. Like, nah, not all at once. Is it, over the course of nah, the time, it's just no. kind of like eight, eight, is, with your, eight is too much. Eight, eight too much, too eight much, too much. Now, eight coronas, nah, bro. We knock them bitches back. Damn, nigga, who driving, nigga? Because <laughs> it ain't me. I don't know. You can't fit in the car. You are gonna be bloated as fuck. Eight coronas. To, oh man, just gotta get the seatbelt on my back. Oh god, no. I'm trying to gain my weight it's back, too much. man. Uh, but I did want to ask you this. So, so you had a chance to talk on there, but uh, I want because I know how close you are to this, but um. LeBron James ended up winning. What is it? This is his fourth title. Hey, number four. I, I swear, four, yeah, fourth championship, fourth uh, MVP, Finals MVP. So gotta love it. Third so, different team. So, with all that being said, now the the the, the timelines is going crazy for the past. We well, I mean one because basketball is over now, so they got to talk about some shit. But now all of a sudden, man, uh, there's talks of like LeBron. Is he the goat? Is he not? You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to ask Every you, year. like, does this this fourth title does this solidify him as the goat? Why or why not? I, I don't think it solidifies him as the goat. I think it definitely solidifies him as a goat. So one of the greatest of all time for sure. I hate semantics. Um, I, I, I mean, you know, is, is that too much semantics? Is I'm it just is. saying. I got you. Like, oh. you don't have to be the the greatest. Like, literally, because. How many people have ever played in the NBA? Yeah. It's a lot of them motherfuckers. Yeah. And for you to just be flat out number one and in how many decades, how many errors, mm-hmm. the different rule changes, the different levels of competition. It's hard to just say, oh, you are predominantly like the greatest player ever. I know everybody wants to say that about Michael Jordan, but let's be real. Everybody thinks about the six to seven years Michael Jordan like won champion. Championships. What about the rest of his career where he didn't even make it out the first round? That's all I'm saying. Or <laughs> I mean, on it. I'm just saying. Speak or on I mean, when he didn't have like Pippen, he went nowhere. Yeah. Or when he needed to pass to Ku Coach, like let's not act like Tony Ku Coach wasn't running shit. We just how, watched how the many, documentary. How many seasons did the Pistons fuck his ass up? Uh, I think it was at least two. Two or three. three. It was like two or three where they just was like, like bad boys beating his ass. What you gonna do? <laughs> he had to hit what you gonna the do? We gonna clock you in your goddamn head. No, so again, you... and LeBron had to go through that same thing. He had to go through the 04 Pistons. Ben Wallace mm-hmm. and them wasn't nothing. They wasn't no slouches and stuff. And he had to power through that. He had to lose to them a couple times before, like, you know, what and I'm the Celtics. Yeah. He, him, LeBron and Jordan took their lumps for seven years. Yeah. Respectively. Before they were able to finally break through and make some changes, I know LeBron or LeBron gets a lot of shit because he left Cleveland. Cool, I guess. Like, let's let's just talk about it. How many people stay at their job for loyalty, even though it's a right. shitty job and they don't make enough money? Now, let's let's just is that is that smart? Let's preface this by saying E. Ray is from Cleveland. He's a Clevelander and a diehard Cleveland Cavaliers fan. So there's no hate here. Continue. I mean, I ain't gonna say all that, but I'll just say <laughs> I, I've been with him. I was born there. I, I, mean. I love the Cavs. I do I mean, look, there were Cavaliers at a Christmas dinner of mine. And it was dope. I appreciate them from Bobby Sura to LeBron James and beyond. But shout, shout out my let's dog, be Bobby real. Sura. Let's be real here. When you get an opportunity as a regular person and you're just like, hey, I got an opportunity at another job. You're not like, oh man, y'all ain't gonna pay me enough. Y'all not giving me the tools I need to be great at my job. Y'all stressing me the fuck out. Everybody wants me to do more shit, but I'm just going to stay here because I should. Because I love it. If you put that in in real world corporate America context, that shit sounds stupid as fuck, right? Sound like nigga, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying though, yet they want this to happen for LeBron. Oh, you can't go nowhere else. So he goes to Miami and I don't care what nobody said. That Miami team wasn't great. It wasn't. It was three it was really a, good players. It was a lot like you, how the, it, it was a lot like how this Lakers team was as far as they had to piecemeal it together. They just dumped some talent in facts. there and was just like, let's just like coalesce this shit to make make it happen. Like 
So that furthermore speaks to LeBron's greatness because LeBron has had has pulled the second year championship each time he's went to a different team. And, and I, will where, say this, I will say this, not to cut you off, mm-hmm. but they call it a big three. It was really a big two and a half. For sure. Sh- really uh, for big, sure. Really I, I'll give that two and a half. By, by proxy because he um J- Basha's uh role was diminished that's what I because mean. he had that's to, what I mean yeah it, he, it, he was and a it's name, hard to but yeah I got you it's hard to be a big three when you got LeBron that can do two of the two of the three things that you need to be done yeah so you got your other guy there he just needs another major key player and then maybe a decent third option because this year's third option was like KCP <laughs> for the most part and it's like who? okay KC who I mean, hey, or 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 uh, playoff Rondo at times. So again, I I'm not going to say anything different. I just think that LeBron has shown that he is a great. I don't hate on him. I hate the people that do hate. Yeah. Because you got to sit here and watch greatness, dog. You can't sit there and be a hater. Here's my take. Here, I'm with it's you. Trash. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, and I'll say this, and and again, that's why I said it. Like when you first said it, it was like semantics, right? Let them as much as this man has accomplished, right? Let's just like check the boxes, bro. Like his overall impact, right? This you mentioned, like, and I, I liked how you just kind of painted that. We we tracked his trajectory, right? Like from the uh, the first mm-hmm. stint with Cleveland to going to Miami to the second stint with Cleveland, then to finally bringing the championship to Cleveland, then coming to mm-hmm. L.A. and like picking up the mantle of Kobe and this and that. A lesser man would crumble under these like restri- like th- these things like so the standard of excellence that this man has set like put some respect on dog's name right we overlooking the f- also we are overlooking with the no fact- culture no culture. with no culture and no coach no great coach he but, ain't, but this the got thing. no field this the thing there is a culture it's his culture right he, he did all of this shit his own way Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Neezy here. I wanted to make sure that y'all go and get your Naturally Nay Instant Moisture Duo. That's right. You know, this Instant Moisture Duo can be used on braids, locks, twists, beards, and all of your natural hair. The moisturizer is all natural ingredients. One of our key ingredients, aloe vera. You know, aloe vera is really great for your scalp. And our oil blend is a mixture of the best oils that you can use to promote hair growth and give your hair a good shine and overall just a natural glow. So you're getting two amazing products. Make sure you go to inaudibleruckus.com slash naturally nay. And also you can follow us on Instagram at naturally underscore nay, N-A-E-E. Like we under we what? under we overlooking that. Like it is it's being underrated the fact that he did everything his own way, right? And then not only that, on the court, off the court, with the social injustice and this and that, just being a leader like on both sides, his endorsements, the movies and the shit that he's doing in the entertainment space, his community efforts all around. Like, stop hating on this man, bro. Let this man win. They talking about oh it's hard. Well, well Jordan did six and oh, he's four out of six. Okay, but if Jordan ass would have stuck around a little bit longer than <laughs> then you know what I'm saying? Like, are we counting right. the Wizards final did he go to the finals with the Wizards? I'm saying though, you you either what they say, you either die the hero or you live long enough to become the villain yep in this in this case you retire while the getting is good or if you stay around long enough you know you you could turn out some rack projects yeah. it's, it's kind of like music yep. like eminem if he would have got shot after the eminem show he's the greatest yep. he might be the greatest rapper of all yep. time and, and, he and, didn't and to that point tupac would have stayed around for 25 years maybe they'd be like man tupac fell off he Biggie. had a, he had a spark when he started, but now he just I know, it. I know. With the experimentation, like musically, like with Diddy and all this now, I know Biggie would have had some albums that everybody would have been scratching their heads looking like, mm, this, Wait, this ain't the sound no more. Yeah. We tired of you sampling everything, dog. This shit is whack. This nigga put it Garth, been there. He put Garth Brooks on the track? Mm, <laughs> don't sound too good. Been, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, it can break it hard. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Like, oh, God. Icky Breaky Hall is breaking. No, I'm taking when I got the money making. Oh, all right, Biggie. Nah, that's, we, we're good. We don't need that. Um, I rode my horse back to my horse break. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Tell your daddy he can suck a horse dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, man. No, Biggie, I, I, no. It's just hate, dog. Like, people hate greatness. They hate Cleveland. 
put two of two together, you get the this weird cousin Akron, which LeBron is from. You know, we're we're the smiles and LeBron. Right. That's it. It's gonna happen. It's cool. So what you're saying is great things come from Akron, so smiles is the goat. Gotcha. He could be. He is. Let him, let him hang smiles. around long enough. Shout out to smiles. Um hey. all right, so moving on. So Bill Burr was on Saturday Night Live. He had a, his his opening monologue, which is you know that's always kind of the draw for Saturday Night Live. Uh, received mixed reactions uh, from viewers, uh, but many of the comedians' fans weren't surprised when he discussed uh, topics that they deemed inappropriate. So he was cracking jokes about <laughs> one of the, like he led off with this, but Rick Moranis from like Honey I Shrunk the Kids got sucker punched, <laughs> and then he got talked stolen. about he talked about cancel culture. <laughs> And he talked about um, performative activism, which is fake activism uh, for those of y'all who like, what the fuck does that mean? Uh-huh. Performative activism by white women. And, and he also <laughs> joked about gay pride month, but he did it all tastefully. And like they, the way Facts. they, they explaining this shit, they talk about it was insensitive and it was offensive. He did it all in a, like if you fuck with comedy, he did it all in a smart, intelligent way. Right. I wasn't right. offended by it. Were you? No, not at all. I, what I, I'll say this, what I was offended by, and and I think offended is a, a bit too strong of a word. What I just found ironic was that all these people were reposting Bill Burr's um, monologue. Mm-hmm. And most of them were like super black actors. I seen uh, Jamel Hill reposted it. A couple other like prominent black figures posted it. But Bill Burr talks about everything in like the most unpopular view because he's he's kind of one of one of us he talks about things from an outside standpoint and just kind of picks it apart yeah and it is an intelligent intelligent way to look at it but it's not always the most popular because it can come off as offensive if you're just way too invested in this topic yep so i found it funny that those people were like reposting this white man talking about it but it shows that they were just because he was just dogging white women, essentially, which was hilarious. Yeah. I thought it was fucking great. No, it's, it's but, even more hilarious because he's married to a black woman. <laughs> they want to see me do my dance. <laughs> Whole lot of Whole on lot of white. <laughs> Whole lot of chocolate on that ass. Um, <clears throat> but nah, man, I, you know me, right? And we talk about this a lot offline. As long as you got comedians like Bill Burr, uh-huh. Andrew Schultz, Dave Chappelle, like those types of people that's going to press that line. Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? Um, even though his stint on Saturday Night Live, he took a more kind of conservative approach. I was um, going to ask about that because I, I did want to want to say I don't mean to cut you off, no, but ahead. I heard Chris Rock because I, I I stopped watching Saturday Night Live. I, 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 I used to stopped. love it. Yeah, I've been I used to love it because that's my type of humor. It's dry. It's ridiculous. It's very wordy and smart. But then it became like political fest yeah. 97. I'm like, I'm I can't I can only watch so many Trump, Nancy Pelosi skits. And I'm like, I don't even care. So the last time I watched might have been either Eddie Murphy or uh Dave Chappelle. Okay. So I didn't get to watch this. I will I did want to check it out because I'm like, okay, since they've been back since COVID, um, their COVID break, I've been hearing it's been fire. But they did say that Chris Rock took a very like neutral not that funny approach like and and chris rock is one of my favorite comedians so that hurt me because i'm like oh i hope he ain't changing the style up i think he is though and you got the because he's starring on fargo now right mm-hmm. and he don't want to he, and he, he got wanna... um the jigsaw series coming out or the movie he ain't jigsaw trying to he ain't trying to lose none of that money man Boo. but again and this is the thing with the comedy shit right some people like they dedicate to that and they're gonna press that line like these comedians they're gonna press that line because they know like all right shit like you know what i'm saying like i gotta open this space up and i appreciate it artistic people, integrity right it's people like us but now some people utilize it as a uh, a medium or a vehicle so that they can like get their dollars right so they can take care of their kids and do all x y and z so i can't be mad at people right but I can't be mad at people. So if you go out here and you and you want to press the line and you want to do all this, and that, hey, freedom of speech, bro. And, and you ha- and the thing with comedy is they have those challenging conversations and touch on those topics that nobody else wants to touch on, so that you can kind of expose the ugliness of things, right? He didn't say nothing wrong. He just said shit that made people uncomfortable. And a lot of times we grow in uncomfortability. Look, I, I hold uh, Chris Rock in high esteem. Because Bigger and Blacker came out in what ninety seven yeah. or so. We was babies. We was little babies. Uh, that babies. shit is still relevant right now. 
So for that to come out and have his timeless work and him pushing the boundaries to hear him kind of playing it safe made me a little bit sad. Now, and I get it because it's like kind of that black respectability. We on liberal time, blah, blah, blah stuff. But like, no, keep keep killing. And I heard Bill Burr killed that shit. So I really want to take a look at the monologue. I've seen the monologue, but I want to see like the whole show. Yeah, because he he's funny as fuck. I like. I was like, it's not always my cup of tea. Yeah, his stand up was he, funny though. His last one. Didn't yeah, he, he he'll give me he'll give me something to laugh at, and I, I like people to just kind of look at the world as it operates and dissect it from a unique perspective. If you can do that, you probably got me. That's why we fuck with Andrew Schultz. I'm like, dog, this is some funny shit. Because it's just a, a unpopular opinion, and you're like, oh, I can make a case for this. That's yeah. what I want. If if Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and like my favorite black comedians are starting to play it safe, that's good. That's another conversation that makes me a little bit sad. I got you. I'm with that. I'm with that. Um. So I did want to ask you this because you mentioned about SNL just kind of getting like overly political. Um. Ice Cube drew fire <laughs> from Twitter. <laughs> Let me say something, right? We're going on red table talk. Y- y- y'all know I'm not on Twitter like that, and I- I've tried to be. And you know, in the Order Bros group chat, y'all send me stuff on Twitter. I don't give a fuck what Twitter got to say because I don't ran down on niggas for talking shit on social media before, right? So this nigga love coming at you with the with the chop. Nah, it-, it ain't even that. It's just like, hey, is you uh hashtag seven hey. <laughs> at at Nico Man ninety five? Hey, hey, hey you what have- you say about my mama? Hey. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, the first one from like back in the day? Absolutely. When they Absolutely. was talking, when they was talking shit on the movie blog, mm-hmm. and, they, and they they got all this money, and they was like, "I know exactly what we gonna do with the money." It was like, "What? We gonna fight all those punks that were talking shit about us on the internet?" And at the end of the movie, they just flew out to everybody else's house and it was like, "Hey." Are you E Ray? Are you E underscore Ray the hipster on Instagram? Yeah, I am. And they just yep. fucked him up in his <gasps> doorstep. They packed dog out. And they just went around. They beat a nigga up in his office. They beat a nigga up at the grocery store. It. They were just beat niggas up. And so I say so that when to we say, make it big, that's what we're going to do. We're oh, no, beat for sure. Shit out, niggas. No. Okay, and, sweet. And it started, right? This whole shit started because I'm, I never forget. I was in college and there was a couple people that, like, they was talking shit to me, right? And I ran into them. Now, a couple people, some real niggas, like, it's just like, all right, this shit is petty. Let's squash it. Now, some other niggas didn't want to squash it, and it just turned into some other shit. And then it was like, all right, and you just had to fuck niggas up. You feel me? Like, stop all that talking shit on the internet, bro. Like, that Twitter shit. That's niggas- how you know street niggas be around. When they tell you a whole story and don't say shit. Yeah, and then the niggas <laughs> said some shit, and then the shit was like, shit. Yeah. You know, shit went, went left. And then when it went right, Shit, it was good night. Hey. Like what? What the fuck are you talking? Cause about? man, that was in the past. I'm just saying though, like like hold on, choppers on your ass. People think that that's gonna be the title of this shit. Fuck <laughs> it. That's the energy we bring it. Cause no, people think yeah. that like, cause I be like, and I'm gonna tell you this: these podcast niggas too. Like y'all think like, oh, I'm gonna get on the mic and I'm just gonna talk all types of crazy shit. I'm down to back up all the shit that I be talking. I have backed it up. We'll back it up again. Now I be mindful about the shit that I say, but I be in the gym. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I'm actually in the gym extra because I'm, I'm talking hella shit this year. So I gotta be able to like box in the gym. I don't box more chins than the Chinese phone book, my nigga. Like, it's, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy. That's all I'm saying. I'm crazy. Like, I'm like 11 and one for real, for real. Um, nah, that ain't counting group fights. I don't lost a hella group fights. But um, nah. What I'm saying is to say. Stop talking shit to niggas if you're not expecting. Like we talked about this when academics was talking shit to niggas, isn't that? Keep that it, same it, energy. Keep the same energy. But mind you too, fuck Twitter, my nigga. Like y'all nigga, you letting Twitter niggas dictate this now. Ain't nobody gonna beat my ass, is my point. So if you're not gonna beat my ass, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna get my takes off. Now, I say that to say, segue into the topic. Ice Cube. I've been on a tangent and shit. Got, right. I got I'm here. coming back to it. Ice Cube. Hold on, Ice Cube. One second. Uh, I whip niggas' asses. Because, okay. bro, you're Thank not going to tell me what I can say and what I can't say, bro. Like, and oh, well, that's just wrong. That's just offensive. Nigga, shut the fuck up. Buy some merch. Um, Because you going to see me at that gas station. Niggas know what I'm talking about. Niggas done ran into me at the gas station and it's been a whole nother conversation, nigga. Anyway. What up, though, and Audibles? I want to take a quick break to shout out Podcorn for sponsoring this episode. For those of y'all that have been rocking with me over the years, man, y'all know how passionate I am about podcasting and the overall concept of podcasting for a living. So I know what you're saying. Wait, what you talking about, Ski? Podcorn serves as a marketplace to connect podcasters with sponsorships that range from anywhere from pre-rolls to mid-rolls and much more, right? 
And the cool part about Podcorn is they're a good source for generating podcast revenue. And there's no middleman. Y'all already know how proud we are on this show about being self-produced and being independent and getting it out the mud. Well, Podcorn gives you that opportunity, man. It gives podcasters the chance to browse and choose sponsorship opportunities and set their own rates. So imagine just browsing through on Podcorn. You see a sponsorship opportunity available for $100, $200. You put down your price and then you send it over and then they respond back and let you know when you've been booked for the proposal or when your bid has been accepted. Right. And there's no funny business either because their mission is to give podcasters the transparency and creative freedom on how and when they monetize their platforms. This is big for the podcast community. So if you want to learn more, man, make sure you click the link in my show notes, man. Sign up, go to podcorn.com. And as soon as you get signed up, man, start browsing for your next opportunity so we can boss up and get this money. Now back to the show. This nigga was pumping gas and I was pumping gas. He thought I was on that gas and then we seen who had it last. Nigga, what? You feel me? <laughs> An- another another hood story by Low Gross. You ain't gonna see me with the Inauto Bros and shit. Oh, he's, oh, he gonna run up on me with some vegan and some hiking niggas? Nah, nigga. I be, Man, I be moving with them. Yeah, alright. Um... So take Ice Cube... vegan games for granted, nigga. Nah, I already know you got hands. That, Drop bows on <laughs> Drop bows. <laughs> Cadillac grills. How, wait, how we, we in our thirties, bro? I ain't wrestling and fighting nobody, nigga. You will get shot anyway. Um, and I ain't doing the shooting. Uh, a lot of choppers on the ass. Ice Cube, <clears throat> whose real name is O'Shea Jackson, as if we don't know. I hate when the articles be doing. Oh, this is for white folks. Right. Uh, well, yeah, I was like, you know, this is white speak. <laughs> O'Shea Jackson. Uh, right. He has long. O'Shea been- way. Ocean, ocean spray. <laughs> ocean spray Jackson. Man, let me read. Let me read. <laughs> <clears throat> So he has long Ocean been. Spray Jackson tastes delicious. I'm sorry. I'm whoa, sorry. I'm whoa. All right. Uh... White man. White man. Uh, Good to you. I got to read. No, I got to read in my white voice. That's all. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I don't cold switch at work no more. So I got to, you know, my white voice is rusty. Ice Cube, whose real name is O'Shea Jackson, has long been critical of Trump. But said on Twitter, fuck Twitter, uh, that Trump, that the Trump White House had been more responsive to his contra- quote, contract with black America, end quote, compared to the Democratic leaders. And this is what caused people to go crazy. The Democrats. Oh, no, this is according to Ice Cube. Uh, quote, Dem said we'll address the contract with black America after the election. The Trump campaign made some adjustments to their plan after talking to us about the contract with black America, end quote. Quote, black progress is a bipartisan issue, tweeted the rapper on Thursday, who in the late 80s famously rapped, fuck the police. Because I got to bring, bring that up. Fuck the police. Um, fuck, fuck. Now, here it is. This the fuck shit. Many fans expressed dismay. What the fuck is dismay? At the rapper's willingness to engage with the president. Because they get mad anytime anybody ever tries to talk to him. In 2016, Ice Cube tweeted that he would never endorse Trump and he released a track called Arrest the President while progressive black women leaders lamented his 22-page plan lacked any specific recommendations for black women, black queer people, or black trans women. Uh, you know, that's what they got. <laughs> I ain't touching that. Right? Neither is he. Right? Uh, <laughs> Whole lot of tough doom, doom, right? <laughs> Off the want, body. Want to see me do my dance? <laughs> right, about to dance right out this subject. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, Ice Cube. So, your thoughts on niggas getting mad at Ice Cube? Let's talk about that. Niggas with attitude at Ice Cube. Go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, that's just silly. Like, Ice Cube been out here for the culture. These motherfuckers still tweeting and shit ain't did nothing else ain't talked about nothing ain't furthered the culture making jokes and shit oh sleepy joe blah 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 and don't know nothing else about the election or trump did this and and i don't believe he grabbed about a pussy and trump made everything bad i stubbed my toe this morning gotta be because of trump like yeah okay whatever i don't want to hear nobody talk about no bullshit and then be mad at ice cube somebody who's actually trying to say look I don't care who you vote for, but we need to hold them accountable for black issues. Yeah. Because at the same time, we're not that big part of like population. Yeah. But we're, our impact is huge. And the fact that we're just people and and we, we kind of are have been left out of the American dream. Yeah. 
means something. They have, so they have yet to address us. They have yet to address us on a grand scale. They throw the Breonna Taylor stuff in there, but they've yet to address what they plan to do for us. They they haven't addressed us in a manner that makes sense to us. They've addressed mm-hmm. us to get our vote. Hey, sh- let's shake some ass. Go vote. We bipartisan though. Like, all right. Yeah. That, you're, we clearly know what's going on here. But the real issue is that Ice Cube is saying, look, same thing that Diddy said. We should hold our vote hostage or we should demand certain things and whoever's going to give it to us, fuck it. That's what we want. Because the problem black people have or are having is we bought into the American dream and we're thinking, oh, whoever wins is for us. So right. if Joe Biden wins, he's going to be for us. And that's not the case. But, it don't matter. Like realistically, it is shown that it hasn't mattered. Dem or Republican, whoever wins, they're still excluding us because pe- niggas still getting shot, police still beating the shit out of people. Rodney King, yeah. and Ford. So, so, <laughs> so, and what I what I get frustrated about is when they always say, "Well, you got to pick the lesser of two evils. Anything's better than Trump." Granted, right? I understand that, mm-hmm. and I respect that. I respect all of other people's views and stuff, right? But you can't pressure me into picking the lesser of two evils, my nigga. Like, like, because I still want to pose the question as far as who's locked up more black people, Biden or Harris? And I'm still like equally like you know the 94 crime bill, and then all the people that Kamala Harris has prosecuted, like in her tenure as a state prosecutor. Come on now. Now I know people I mean, could that, change in this and that, but that's still there. That that's still that's just as much wrong. That's true. You feel me? Like like we can't just ignore that. And that's what I mean as far as like. And, and I'm not mad at Ice Cube because he basically. It's not like he just went and tried to support Trump. He offered both of them an opportunity to address him, and one didn't, and one did. That's right. It. And I think that's what it what it is like. Oh, I don't have to talk to you. And it's like, hmm, interesting. But I'm so, like versus. I mean, I, I don't want somebody to pander to any old celebrity thinking that they have the the black vote or by doing that, like talking to <coughs> Cardi B. Yeah. But we're going to get to that next, I, next, next, I know. Segment, next segment. I'm just, but I'm saying, you know, <laughs> if, when it comes to an ice cube, somebody who is well versed and has a pretty interesting opinion when it comes to politics and pro blackness in itself. He has a record of this. Yep. I would like to have some type of, I mean, if we're not going to stick up for us and he is, okay, cool. Let's see what, what he proposes for blackness and black people. And let's see how our uh, presidential candidates are holding this accountable. And so like, oh yeah, we would like to do that. Maybe we will put money in this and not just education and some shit that's Ice hopeful Cube, money. Ice Cube made a post today. He said, when I got on the bus to school, the homies called me a sellout. When I started rapping in 1983, the gangbangers called me a sellout. When I left NWA, they called me a sellout. When I started doing movies, rappers called me a sellout. When I started my (laughs) own league, the arena said it was a sellout. Nigga, Ice Cube gave us the big three in the Friday series. My nigga, let him live. You feel me? Like, like I don't, don't want to hear that shit, bro. Somebody got to advocate for us. And, and the biggest bully thus far, you know, uh, and when I say bully, I mean that affectionately because Ice Cube stood up for a lot of niggas. When he fought Debo <laughs> with that brick. Yeah. I would, for the neighborhood. I, That's what he's doing right now. Trump is a big dumbass Debo. You feel me? For and no reason. For that. Trying to bully everybody into some bullshit. No. And he's like, no, well, what, what, what we about to get out of this? Now, before we slide, because we got we to gotta cut to some music, I will say this, <clears throat> and I know we didn't want to touch it, but the reason why some of these people are mad with the, with, uh, and again, that's why I say you got to, you got to, st- like, I know Twitter is a, a good source of information and stuff, but there's a lot of fuck shit going on there, right? You got to be able to discern. These people that are like advocate, well, he's not talking about black women and black queer people and black trans women. That's people who have their own kind of agenda that they're pushing, and they that's why they trying to turn on ice cube and trying to get us to turn on ice cube because they trying to advance that other agenda that they got going on i don't talk about the gay agenda i'm not talking about that i don't talk about that i don't want y'all to think that this ain't this i'm just talking about it's another group of people. you're just saying ev- i think everybody has an agenda yes. and, and everybody's wanted- agenda is exactly. themselves exactly but at the same time when you if we're all united if we're supposed to be uniting you can't get mad then- when somebody else is pushing their agenda is really what i'm trying to Bru- say for sure but what i what i want to say to that as a counterpoint hey ice cube is fighting for black people 
So if things get better for black people, he don't have to specifically address exactly queer black people or black women because that's all encompassing in blackness. Right. So if it gets better for us overall and opportunities, then great. Now, once we got some equality here with blackness, now if there is something else to address and it's not getting to black queer folks or it's not getting to black women like it should, now we can keep going and dive deeper into it and just keep going. But the first first draft, that was like asking nigga, hey, write the Bible. What? Right now. Well, no, one it, take. It nigga. says it says con- take, oh, it says shit. contract with black America. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, we gonna cut. This they be off. searching. Right. They be I reaching. Know. Which again, fuck Twitter. And if anybody got a problem with that shit, nigga, like, <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna invite that energy into my life. But I don't wanna beat nobody. Hold up. on, chop something. Yeah. Um, just <laughs> fuck it. I feel good. I shared the good news with you. I'm not gonna share it on air. But like, big shit happening this week for the whole squad. So we're just gonna celebrate. Uh, you know our celebration song. This first track is called Money Machine by the homie Tony Del Fresco, <laughs> hey. who celebrated a That's birthday this week. Shout out to my dog, man. Uh, we gonna we gonna link soon because I'm I think I'm about to start doing the interview series again, man. And I'm about to link with some of the dope ass artists down here in Houston as well as Detroit as well as all over because some dudes out in D.C., some Tulsa, uh, Chicago, uh, Atlanta. Uh, the Bay Area, LA. It's a lot of dope dudes. Oh, this out here nigga doing potting things. all over the world. Potting all, all over the world. Let's <laughs> go. Ain't no women because Nizi gonna kick you. Exactly. The go listen to the Skeeters pot. mini songs. Uh, and, the, <laughs> and, and the second, um, the second is called "Sky's the Limit." To, uh, shout out to the homie Rude Boy Want, man. So this is called Sky's the Limit. He did drop a new tape called Hood Tales, man. And he he on his grind right now. So y'all make sure y'all support him. Uh, it's an audible ruckus. Motherfucker. M- m- motherfucker. Trapping out the cleaners, Supreme starts dying like my uncle when you meet him. <laughs> my bitch bad like a little, and when I'm in my city, fuck a deuce, I pour a little. And when I'm on the scene, all the bitches want to meet him. I'm a money machine. Money machine. I'm a money machine. Money machine. Money machine. That's a money machine. A money machine. That's a money machine. Bitch, I think it's 9-6. Drop top lag with the fifth on the back switch. Bitch, you ain't seen four straight out of Cali. I nigga rock Supreme phone. Supreme is the deep game. That's why your bitch calling trying to get that Supreme brain. Flipping down Scott, man, my real so big, I think my tie's about to pop. See, I ass so fat, I think a penny's about to drop. Kevin Stick, touch the shit, that's the chop shop. Slip gate, touch the change, a nigga went pop. And every time I turn, I call my real chop chop. Trapping out the cleaners, Supreme starts dying like my uncle when you meet him. Uh, my bitch bad like a leaf, and every time I taste that bitch, that hoe wanna meet him. Uh, I'm a money machine. I'm a money machine. Money machine. I'm a money machine. 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 That's a money machine. A money machine. Oh, that's a money machine. I'm thinking nine six a pile of old Chevy shit. Big nigga hopping out the Porsche, show some heavy shit. Just took a nine out of brick, threw it on my wrist. Triple X, ready to flick. How look up at my wrist? Hey, look up at my neck, she all up in my grill. Got paid, fuck a record deal. I just crack seals, sell pills on the daily like a mech. Y'all can have drink and let me fuck Tay Heck it on the record for the record. I've been breaking track records, trying to move a thousand blocks. Gotta keep a clean record. For the record still lit Ask them hoes in the city BTF, IPO, big money in the city Get it with me Hey, got the H up in the A up on some Trey shit I got an 8 up in the mountain Do a sun kiss High up on them perks Watch the sun get a kiss If I'ma get it, it's a hit a hit Ho never miss my machine, a bitch I'm a money machine I'm a money machine Money machine I'm a money machine 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 Money mach
money machine. That's a money machine. A money machine. That's a money machine. What up, though? It's your boy, Uncle Skeetar, and you are listening to an audible ruckus. Make sure you check us out on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and SoundCloud, and check out the website, inaudibleruckus.com. It's an audible ruckus, motherfucker. Holly Molly made this. What up, Paul? That shit that we just kicked it about some real shit. Can't put all your eggs in one basket, man. Got a multitask. Reach for the stars. Pray for the best. Prepare for the worst. I ain't seen my brother in eight months. My grams in four years. But gang the haters every day. Just keeping it real. Life challenges. Eating these county sandwiches. Reminiscing on the times I ain't had shit. Nah, it's foreign chains and rollies. It's my life. Nah. I fell in love with the lifestyle. Hit the pedal two times. Watch the pipes growl. No, my granny smiling. At me while she looking down At the same time, mama want me to change But I'm stuck in my ways Nigga try me, gon' get stuck in the grave That's how it is when you got shit to live for But kick a nigga dope before I tell my kids no It's easy to judge, but you don't know what I've been through Used to pack a 38 when I went to school Neighborhood on fire, I'm trying to stay cool They label me a statistic, I was born a lose My first whip was a regal, set it on 22s Cruising through the hood, flossing, banging that real nigga blues A bad bitch so a lawyer when shit I had to choose They was coming in two, said I had to juice I learned life on the gang when I lost my bro tooth Got a problem with the gang, he the first to shoot It feel good when you win it, but damn it hurt to lose Just called my brother the other day and got some bad news They shot my nigga's shoulder and left him on the porch news Niggas dying every day, so I don't watch the news Keep one eye open, stay on your P's and Q's Play by the rules, I'm most important, niggas keep it too I say sky's the limit I say sky's the limit Sky's the limit They wanna see you lose So you gotta win it Ay. You gotta win it Stay with your for the stars Cause the sky's the limit Ay. I say sky's the limit Can't hate it all they want But I'm gotta win it Ay. Gotta win it Ay. I say sky's the limit No matter what, I'ma go hard It's not how you start, but it's how you finish I say sky's the limit yeah, Sky's the limit No matter what, I'ma go hard They hate it when they see you in that new car Just for my niggas on the prison yard Rest in peace to real ones who ain't make it far yeah, I say sky's the limit It's not how you start, but it's how you finish All right, y'all, we back up in this thing. That first track was Money Machina by the homie Tony Del Fresco, and then Sky's the Limit by Rude Boy Money Womp. Machina. Make sure y'all go stream his project Hood Tales on all streaming platforms, man. Copy some of that Rude Boy apparel, man. Waiting on my shirts coming through. Make sure y'all stay dangerous. We staying dangerous all the rest of 2020 going into 2021 because ain't no use to play a defense. Might as well play offense. Hold on, chop some of that. Ass. Hey. Um, Wanna see me do my dance Alright so we got all the, the kind of woke Political stuff out the way Now it's time to get into some debauchery uh, oh. um, Salami nips So on uh, this week we had a bit of a nip slip uh, Cardi B uh, Says that she was definitely not Intending to share her topless photo of herself With the world In an Instagram live post on Tuesday The rapper revealed in detail How she accidentally sent a not safe for work Image to her Instagram storage Earlier that day uh, Oops she, So she broke it down and I, I, I can't read it in the Cardi voice But she basically was saying Lonnie I, boobs. I was laying in the fucking bed right And I'm telling Offset I hit myself under here and it got a little swollen. So I'm on camera and it looks swollen, she explained. I'm taking the fucking picture and then I, I fucking pressed. This is her cousin. Cause <laughs> everybody say we cuss too much, but they love Cardi B. Um, <laughs> and then I fucking pressed and I'm seeing that it's loaded and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, the picture's loading. <clears throat> and so she posted a picture of her titties. Now, everybody, because uh, again, y'all be listening to Twitter and letting Twitter tell y'all what's hot and what's not. Everybody was talking about oh, her areolas are big as hell and all this snack. And, and so then they was nipple they were nipples. Salamis. 
There was nipple shaming her with the salami tits. Look like a, a nice slice of copper cola. <laughs> like some baloney. Some baloney boob. Like, like some uh, rag baloney. Uh, so. Nah, I'm I'm climbing. That, what's niggas mad? Like, 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 first off, first off, right. who's gonna judge titties, man? Like, like, how you gonna be mad at titties? It's a titty. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't mad at it, but I definitely judge it. I can't help it though. I'm a tit snob. Like your podcast snob, I'm a yeah. tit snob. Love me some good New York boobs. So how would, good, how, how would you rate the titty tits. on a scale of one to five? Where do you, where do you categorize the titty? Um, so twofold. I, I, and I feel different about it. But my first reaction was like, eh, it wasn't for me. Then I came back after I heard an explanation. I thought about it. I came back. I came back. I was like, you know what? Those are some good mom boobs. I, I shouldn't. I I don't have because again, for me, I'm just looking at it like, okay, the surgeries and stuff like that. I appreciated her and her honesty. I think that's why people like Cardi. It's not necessarily cursing or whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's just because she's honest and she keep it real as fuck. So she says, hey, I had my tits done. I was gonna get them done again. I had these small nips. I had small areolas. I had a baby. Baby be chewing on them titties. I get bigger, tits get bigger, right. things start swelling up. Like, you know what? You got damn right. Nice tits. Tits are tits. And I and I felt okay. I, I didn't feel it's, it's not tit shaming. I'm not gonna have to tit shame this woman. Right. It's like she kept it real. She's like, yep, that was me. I did it. My bad. I couldn't. I panicked, but you know, I took it in stride. I can't hate on that. I like the honesty. And at the end of the day, I think it's dope. To be that open, not necessarily. Yeah, to, to be able to own it, like, look, y'all, I made a mistake. My bad. I meant to send right. this to my husband. Which they actually, I think they about to get back together again. They said they back together. They should. Which is good. I don't do them. Love is love, baby. Right. Um, but it was a mistake. She and instead of like being, oh my god, oh we do not condone. It was like, look, bro, it was a mistake. My finger slipped on the thing. My bad, y'all. Mm. Next. But she used to dance at a strip club. She was a stripper, so niggas yeah. used to see them titties. It's all good. Keep, keep it real. How many times have you almost posted some mad inappropriate your news or somebody else's on accident because of because of Facebook? When you put Facebook, as soon as you put shit, just all your pictures pop up. You go, oh god damn! Ooh, Never almost fucked up. Never. Well, you you're one of ancient man. You're nah, one of, I, I, of we're not. This is one why. of one. Because I'm first off, first off, I'm grown, right? So I stopped taking. I don't know about y'all niggas. I stopped taking dick pics when I was like mid twenties. It was like, all right, I've outgrown this. This is childish. Can't be out here sending just dick pics. Yeah, I'm be sending. My, yeah, you don't send the send the schmeat. Yeah. To nobody like that. That's but, wild. Yeah. But just saying, and, it'd be, and, it'd be and, some pictures. And I've been in a committed relationship for like ten years, almost. Damn. Well, forty two years. Nah. Well. We've been. I always forget, but we've been we've been married for three years. We've known each other for like eight years. No, no, no. no. We've been together for eight years. We've known each other for Young eleven B. years. So it's just at some point you just be like, nah, I'm not sending. You ain't gonna do it. You like, look, you ain't gonna send your wife to Capricola. You ain't gonna listen here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's hot. Gotta give you some of this little Caesars, baby, from Detroit. <laughs> hot and ready. Uh. <laughs> A whole lot of salami on your ass. No, uh, <laughs> half a brick, whole brick. Hey, no. <laughs> quarter pound, whole pound. Okay. Uh, you want to see what's in my pants? I had to get my camera down. <laughs> nigga. Ne- oh my God. Tune That's in to the next episode, the next mini episode of the Skeeters. <laughs> talk about titty pics. Um, right. Nah, I ain't tripping off that, man. It, it is what it is. I, I just, you know what I'm saying? It happens. And I haven't done it. But, you know, if, you, if you've done it out there, man, own that shit, man. Be all right. It's the body, man. As much as porn is all over the place now in Europe, nigga, right. there's fucking titties all over billboards. So act like y'all seen the titties. Orange before. juice. Like, hmm, orange juice tits for yeah. no reason. Yeah. It's okay. That's it. I'm okay with that's any it. of those. That's, that's my real take, nigga. Like, act like y'all seen a titty before, god damn it. Y'all niggas be like, oh my god, titty. Like, nigga. Niggas used to get them shits in high school all the time, man. Act like you never sucked a titty before. So, some haven't. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna... Dweebs. Uh, right. I was like, you dealing with some, some new niggas, some internet guys, and some uh, overly sensitive women and people that are just like, oh my gosh. 
the respectability politics. Well, you, you know what? You so know what? Go. I think because and me and Neezy was talking about this, and I was gonna introduce. It's an old term, but I'm gonna bring it back. But like dweeb, I feel like has been kind of commercialized now. Everybody's saying it, and it's it's like mm-hmm. you know, I I think I kind of ran it into the ground. So my new term is herb ass nigga. You habitual bitch ass nigga. Like so, it, you Damn. herb you herb ass nigga out here. That's like oh my god, I don't like these titties. Nigga, you don't get no pussy and you don't get no titties. Uh but speaking of you'll get no pussy or no titties. That would be weird if you got pussy and no titties. We we got a solution. <laughs> that would be weird. It's a hey, I've been in college and I know some niggas. <laughs> anyway. Know some niggas. <laughs> that ain't like that. Dave just got just got the, the pussy machine. It's just a half a torso. Like, let's talk about that. Why is it why no dude can have a sex toy? That's fucking creepy. If you have a sex toy, you're a fucking sick bastard. You are. You just open up, hey man, grab me that uh out the drawer. This is what the fuck is this? Bro, just use your oh, hand. That, that, just my, just bro, use just your just hand. My. Like if you gotta do all that, nigga, just use your hand. You got a whole gelatin vagina just yeah. in a goddamn drawer. That and shit's it, scary. And if you need some adventure, use your other hand, nigga. Like, I don't know what to tell like, you. Um now, call a stranger. But we, we we got a suggestion though, right? So and you you brought this up. It was it was a, a flyer <laughs> for like what was it like a sex barber or something? Like nude barber or something? It was some chicks. These sex workers is online offering exotic barber to give like blow, should be called erotic barber blowjobs and like high top fades, right? So you can get a hundred dollars, you can get your dick sucked, and you can get a lineup. Get a retwist and a retwist. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you find this shit at, bro? The internets. The internets the is why I, a saying, friend you sent it, it to Twitter. me. You found it on Twitter. Probably a friend sent it to me and was like, of "I'm looking like, excuse me, I'm like, why would? Because I'm so against like paying for sex or sexual favors, any of this shit. So I'm automatically like, what the fuck, right? But then I was like, oh wait, that's a great business model though. <laughs> like nigg- niggas need the haircuts. It's it's quarantine, right? So everybody was out here looking rough. He's like, I can have a chick come to my spot. I can pay her to cut me up, and then the sex that I've been thinking about possibly having with her." I just pay and get it. Yeah. And she like, yeah, I cut and I suck dick better than your girl. I'm like, you whoa, should. Whoa, whoa. You're a professional. You're a whole professional. There's no reason why I if mean, my girl can do this better than you, I ain't paying her. She did this shit for free. I, I'll you, say this. I'll say this. They get more and more creative with this whole sex worker shit, right? We done watched them like evolve to like selling feet. And then now they <laughs> now they like, all right, what service is that? Next, ne- next thing you know, it's going to be video game shit. It's going to be like, hey, we're going to post. Oh, it's already there. But they already po- there, bro. They post like they got their titty out while they play Twitch. Yep. And it's, yep. Yeah. That is Shit. a thing. I seen. That. I was like, I'm what late. the fuck? I'm like, it's the a, game. Yeah, yeah. It's it might be called tits. Tits stream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Tits stream. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No. It, it's. It, I definitely agree with you. It's very creative. They're getting creative with how to make these these coins over here. They're yeah. like, look, we'll we'll cut your hair and suck your dick. Like, right, whoa. Yeah. yeah whoa. If you're in the Houston area and need a dope studio for your photo or video shoot, hit up Vision Light Studios. They're located at 8443 Almeda Road in the NRG area. They have all the amenities needed to make your shoot an amazing experience with air conditioning, free Wi-Fi, hair and makeup stations, and all the heavy-duty equipment to bring your visual concept to life. Make sure you follow them on Instagram at Vision Light Studios and visit their website for more details at visionlightstudio.com. I just need that sounds like a man's dream come true. Right. Like I got a crispy ass lineup, and now I ain't even got to go to the club to get this ass. No, genius. I will They're say going this. straight to sleep. I will say this in a more respectful way. I remember last year I mentioned to my wife because Neezy is a DIYer, right? She she's she <laughs> she learns how to do things, and she's like, all right, I could do this now. I was like, because I had a hard That's time finding. Huh. <laughs> I said that's one thing about you better not learn that. Right. I kill well, you. Nah, kill well, you. well nah, because Well, you do it to me. Well, yeah, right, nah, that's what I'm saying. Right. So right. I had You're a hard like, yeah. time finding a consistent barber on the north side, right? So a couple of years back, and I was just like she's like, I'm gonna learn how to cut your hair, babe. And I was like, Hey, that actually would be pretty dope if my wife knew how to cut my hair, because it's like, hey, like you can just cut my hair, smoke a blunt, and then you know we can fuck. Like I Fade in auto cool. buns. Hey. <laughs> 
auto buns in the trap. Mm, 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 mm. Like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing. So, I mean, it, I, now this, you know, I wouldn't pay no hundred dollars for no random chick, like, cause again, now let's put it in perspective, right? You know how the barber shop is. You go to the barber shop, it's all these niggas lined up and shit. So this got to be appointment only stuff. Like, I want to go there and then like. All right, who next? Because you know how they got to sweep the hair out the chair and all this and that. So, like, she got all this yeah, shit sweep hanging the around G her. Yeah, sweep the jizz off her cheeks. She's like, all right. Crazy ass titties. <laughs> all right, who's next? It's like, whoa. Not me. <laughs> I'm out of here. Right. Uh, nah. Uh. I'm over to him. Then, so you got to think. Then, if you walk in and it's like an actual barbershop where they got different chairs and stuff, do you go over the old girl who's sitting by the door? Because, you know, that first chair, you don't never go to that first chair. <laughs> and her head game might not be the best and your face fucked up. So then you get trash head and you get a fucked up hairline. Is it really worth it? Or, and can you get a refund? No. Let's say. No, I imagine you cannot. I imagine there's a big ass nigga no named refunds? Malik. There's a big ass muscular nigga with a fishnet tank top on named Malik. And he got dreads. <laughs> and he like, no, nah, all sales final. Don't touch. But it's it, it's at your house, though. So this is even more interesting. Because let's say that she comes to your her, house. Her pimp is sitting outside in his Dodge Charger <laughs> with his pistol. And then the moment she texts him, like, he ain't paying. You're going to hear a knock at your door. Boom. And, knock that goddamn door. And you're going to get pistol whipped. I, 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 don't, ask, don't ask me why I know all this in detail. But you're going to get right. pistol whipped. And then niggas going to lay you face down on your shit. And then they're going to run your pockets. And then nine times out of ten, let's say she just got done. And you sitting there with your dick out. Do you really want another grown ass man beating you up while you got your meat hanging out, bro? <laughs> I'm not fighting no nigga butt naked. I couldn't I'm be not, a pimp in this case. I can't. I, look. Let me get dressed first. Just, right. Can, can, I put, can I put my goddamn dick away? Yeah. Before I have to square up? Like, my lineup is off. She she ain't cut my hair right. She took my line too far back. And then... She, no. Mm-mm. And see, you that, think... That, and that you, head was lazy. She not had a long ass and day. And you think you gonna she have taller, time to... Tired. Yeah, you bought her fifth client, you know, in an hour. You know what I'm saying? Because she moved fast. Um, you think that you're going to have time to explain all this to Man, Malik? if she could get five off, five lineups, and dick sucks, she's a fucking miracle worker. Man, <laughs> Hold up. Saying. You might. <laughs> I don't know. God damn. She, she, oh! she got to hire, she's the, she got to hire the whole team. So, let's, yeah. All right. I think we should move on. Team of hoes. Team of whole professionals. Hoes, I like it. Hoes ain't nothing but hoes. No, this is not women. These is just hoes. Professionals. Um, there's a difference. So don't be on our heads. About All them hoes caught. Hoes tried. All right. No more. <laughs> more serious topic. I wanted to bring this up because I thought that this was a little weird. Um. So Nipsey Hussle's estate has launched an illegal battle. Oh, this goes to our offline conversation we're having. Uh, Nipsey's Hustle yeah. Estate is launched in a legal battle against the Crips LLC. <laughs> <laughs> According to TMZ, the late rapper's brother Samuel, uh, I forgot, I don't know how to pronounce Nipsey in the last name, but Black Sam. Everybody know who Black Sam As, is. Yeah. Acidom. Um, is suing the Crips LLC over trademark rights to the Marathon Continues, a slogan that has been synonymous with Nipsey's brand. The suit claims that the Los Angeles based street game. <laughs> That's crazy. Attempted right? to trademark the phrase for various services, quote unquote, and clothing in, in 2019. I'm like, the Cripple Cola niggas? Uh, right, yes. Uh, just a couple months after Nipsey was fatally shot, the estate points out that the family uh, already secured Marathon, just the, the phrase Marathon trademark, for various services and products, including Nipsey's clothing store. But uh, news of the lawsuits comes more. Uh, then a year after his family expressed frustration over the Crips trademark applications, uh, the gang initially apologized to the family and suggested that they would withdraw from the filings. They said that they respectfully vowed to support the wishes of Lauren London, who is Nipsey's girlfriend, um, and the Astrodon family. Well, that's what the Crips wrote. However, the gang has since justified their marathon trademark application, stating that Cuh, Crips organization had long used the phrase the marathon cut. continues as our ideology slogan in the past. Um, Nipsey became a well-known Crip and the phrase became popularized. I doubt that. I think that's a Nipsey thing. Um, right. I ain't going to tell them no different though. I don't know. Right, yeah, I don't want to be... Not that type of beat. Uh, so Nipsey's estate basically is seeking monetary damages as well as an order of destruction of any Crips produced merch that uses the marathon trademarks. 
Uh, my response to that is this shit petty as fuck, bro. This shit, petty? This shit is petty, Murphy. Petty, confusing. It's like, what? Like, I guess. And but to the point we had offline. Incorporate, get your LLC. Yeah, get your and make your money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your money. Get your money, cuz. <laughs> a whole lot of top is on. I mean, <laughs> right. I'm saying it makes sense. It's logical. But at the same time, when it comes to people that we like, and it's like, ugh, it feels gross. Like you guys are profiting in yeah. in this way. So I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. This I, is. I, I'll say. I don't this, really have much opinion on it. From a business standpoint, niggas will slide on you, man. And unfortunately, this is people like this is his, the gang that he was part of. Now, if you know, like, kind of the history, just of like that that particular like group. I'm t- not mm-hmm. the whole gang, but just that particular group or whatever. Then it's, it's just be a lot, it, yeah, it's a lot going on, um, and neither here nor there. Um, right. But I'll say this: when it come to business and all of that stuff, man, people like that's biz- that's corporate warfare, right? People will see a, a, a idea or something and try to get in front of it, and they be like, "All right, we just gonna go on the back end here." Like, uh, remember when the Washington football team when they were trying to come up with all these names, but then they look up and like. <laughs> Everything, everything got trademarked. Was already trademarked because niggas just mm-hmm. kind of was sitting on that. You got people that do stuff like that. You feel me? So mm-hmm. it's just one of those things. So where, yeah, I wonder did they already trademark the erotic barber? So they had to go with exotic barber, probably. Because I was like, so that don't make no sense. They I'm, probably did that down in Chuckalisa. Down in the Delta where the girls get naked. Right. I don't. Think hey, hold can. on. I let Mercedes come out here. Let's hear Mercedes. <laughs> Give me a goddamn feed. I don't think and, and uh, trim my mustache. <laughs> to be real with you, bro, I don't think they pushed that much thought into it. I think they just wanted to just make some quick money and they just wanted to suck some dick. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm like, damn, the Crips? <laughs> whoa, <laughs> no, whoa, 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 no, no. I was like, whoa. Talk, talk about the barbers. I didn't know. Talk about the, the stripper oh, barbers. The stripper barbers. Gosh. I'm talking about the, the stripper barbers <laughs> want to suck some dick. <laughs> Clarif- no. Clarify, thank you. I got that. It was look, the, don't, the look, look, I know I said I want this. I don't want that smoke. Cause what if right. we blow up and we gotta go out to LA and stuff? I don't want niggas running down on me. Right. Oh. Nope. Nah. I uh, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think it all it always evolves. I think everybody's looking for a quick buck, especially nowadays, where things seem to be even more limited, and creating your own is definitely available. Everybody starting a business. Everybody got either a fitness business or something yeah, like that. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Crip Fit bands start doing it. You got to do your squats. Get your squats in. I'm, just throw I'm, some blue I'm, patterns on that shit. My thing is, why are y'all just not doing this? Y'all should have did that from the jump. You feel me? Like, like it, it, only because. So we brought up the Crip Cola thing, like being funny. But during uh, Killer Mike's uh, Netflix series, he talked about how the Hell's Angels are incorporated and they got X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z, and and you know what I'm saying. So I Keep feel funded. I feel like we're always last at a party, even yeah, when yeah. it comes to organizations. Yeah, yeah. Man, All right. whiteness is yeah. frustrating to me. So, so moving on, more whiteness. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Talk about Jerry's where I, I'm gonna be there um, this mon- Monday with your mask on. Even though, yep, when Dak exploded. Well, actually, I'm gonna be in the sky box. Okay, baller, baller, swag, shot to call there. swag, yeah. Are you looking for a reliable mechanic to tune your car up so you can get back and forth? Then you need to call Coachworks Auto. Coachworks Auto offers custom painting, fabrication, and even minor engine repair. Give them a call at 313-779-9743 and set up your appointment today. So let's talk about that though, because Dak Prescott, who was having, you know, what I'm saying, a solid year, mm-hmm. and, and he was poised to, to 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 break out even further, mm-hmm. because I feel like Dak has kind of been like the, the one of the shining lights in an inconsistent Cowboys team. Uh, yeah. Even when Zeke kind of fell off, I don't want to say fell off, but you know, Zeke has been kind of inconsistent. Was but, struggling. Yeah, he was struggling. And that defense, I don't know what was going on because they got so much talent on there. But Dak Prescott has been kind of that one consistent for all these seasons, uh, mind you. 
uh, before breaking his ankle this year, like he this was he was franchise tag, so he was kind of betting on himself, which I think as it kind of ups the ante like on this this whole ordeal. So what's your thoughts? Like what was going through your mind when you see his ankle point to the north? Uh, when when his ankle was like north north, and he was the opposite way, yeah. I was like. Well, there goes my fantasy because this nigga has had 450 plus yards in three games, 70 over 71 points. He was slinging twice. that thing. He been slinging that thing. Slinging that thing, and I'm not talking about the erotic barber. Right. We we talking football <laughs> for all you perms out there. See, here go Twitter, T- uh, titty Twitter. Not up the here. salami. Right. Titty Twitter <laughs> with the salamis. No, uh, he was killing, and I was like, oh my gosh, this nigga's ankle exploded. I'm going to lose. Fuck you, smiles. It took. COVID, rescheduled games, and Dak's ankle to explode for Smiles wishing Eve on Baker Mayfield last week. Damn. This is why all this shit happens. Damn. Blame Smiles. So I am I am sad about that. I wish um I wish him a speedy recovery on a serious note. I think he's had a, a rough year already. He lost his mom to cancer a few years ago. Yeah, his or brother, I think his a year brother or so ago. Committed suicide then yeah, April. his brother committed suicide because of he took care of his mom and it was like i guess it stuck with him it was hard and then in a contract year where he does not have his money yet and he got franchise tag he has a, a, a horrific injury injury coincidentally the same week that alex smith comes back from a horrific injury that yeah. took him about a year and a half almost two years to come back so from. and alex, he thought he might never play alex smith had like 17 surgeries Yep, seventeen surgeries, almost died, almost had to amputate his leg. Yeah, he, he I think Dak's doing far yeah. better. Well, yeah, they they rushed him to the hospital right away, so he had surgery. He's doing good. He's in good spirits. But um, do you think that once he comes back, because he, he wasn't really much. It wasn't like he was like a, a, a Lamar Jackson or a Russell Wilson. Now he could scramble if he needed to, but he was mm-hmm. more in the pocket. Do you do you see this impact in his game when he does come back? They say he's out four to six months, which means he's probably out the rest of the season. But do oh, yeah. you see this impact in him for next season? Um, possibly only because he didn't have a contract. So I think that it's, you know, Jerry Jones already calculating in his, in his head. He already doing yeah. the math. Like I'm shave, so shave off an extra 30 no million. Loan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. It's good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, know, you come back, you got to prove it. And it's like, I think there are plenty of organizations that he did enough. He did a great body of work in what, four weeks. Yeah to show what what we needed to see because i don't think any of the losses or the the shitty start that the cowboys have have had has anything to do with that for the most part right the 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 offense was flowing it's It's the defense defense that couldn't fucking stop anything yeah so realistically i think that he may end up this actually might go to his advantage that there's going to be teams that need quarterbacks and like a good starting quarterback and i think they might get him for a little bit cheaper, mm-hmm. and they do. Uh, he'll do another like I'll prove it season, and then he gonna get broke off. Yeah. And I'm hoping that's what happens for him because he deserves it. He does. I, I have my he doubts. Does. He really does. I think year one was a bit of a fluke. He had a good a good year, but it was predicated on uh, Zeke. Yeah. Year two, he regressed because it was a lot of check down stuff. But then he they, they came had to, out. They had to the find last... the right mix because they they was trying to do a hard mm-hmm. adjust. The tape was out on Zeke, and they just loaded the box. Mm-hmm. And then by them loading the box, it's like okay, how do we got to build that offensive line up again? Because it was a lot of injuries on the offensive line that they don't talk about, mm-hmm. right? And so play action is ineffective. Jason Witten, you know what I'm saying? You got it because a lot and of they times... didn't have and they didn't have the personnel on the. Um... Uh, in the receiver core exactly either. and exactly now now their receiver core is nice well and, and receiver that's, core is so, real nice so this is one of the things so I that's love, what hurts I, I love about football be, and you know franchise mode right so a lot of times w- when you have a younger quarterback <clears throat> his safety valve is the tight end right this is fantasy football mm-hmm. tip for y'all so if you got a young quarterback that's learning the office stuff you get you a good tight end but mm-hmm. That tight end, you also have receive. You know what I'm saying? You got to have good receivers, good offensive line, a good run game. It's all these things have to like all kind of like line up in order to be perfect. Yep. And that was kind of the knock on Dak, where he needs everything to be 100 percent perfect to perform at a high level. Now, everything hasn't been perfect, 
and he's still now, been prior perform- to right. exactly, and he's been performing at a high level, which made me know like, he's a gamer, right? He isn't just mm-hmm. like a, a prototypical quarterback. He can get it in. Now, to your point, now they got all these weapons because before they just had Des, Des Brown and a bunch of nobodies, and then you just chuck the ball yeah. at Des Brown. It's like the Lions. You just chuck Des the ball Bryant. You, got, you have named his man. He, he another one of the abusive uh, Browns. Des Brown. Des Bryant. I said Des Bryant. I thought I said Des Bryant. He said Des Brown. Oh, well. <laughs> Jim Brown, Bobby Brown. The nigga ain't in the league Lakers no in, more. <laughs> Lakers in six. Look, look, you're knocking your microphone down. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. I made a mistake. I had to slap that mug around. <laughs> Keep <laughs> him with us. Shut your mouth. <laughs> E-Ray Brown. <laughs> Cocaine. Bad, bad. Leroy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine. Um, but no, nah, it's like they got they got some they got some dogs on the team, man. And now and again, they got talent on the defensive side. I think it's just a scheme thing, right? So it remains to be seen. But um, speaking of talent, Le'Veon Bell was released by the New York Jets, and the rich get richer because it was rumored. Speaking of failing up, it, it was like he, he gonna sign. Maybe they thought he was gonna go back to the Steelers, which that they immediately ruled that out. They said he was either gonna go to the Bills, the Chiefs, or the Dolphins. He ended up going mm. to the Chiefs, which duh, we knew like he was gonna do that. Okay. What what are your predictions for Le'Veon Bell on the Chiefs? Other than another championship. <laughs> I mean, that's all I got. There you have it, folks. Good night. <laughs> like shit. That was the that's like the the LeBron shit, except for it's like, hey, I need to just kind of instead of being LeBron, he's more like Dwight Howard. Like, yeah. Hmm, JaVel McGee. Yep. Like, hey, I can I can contribute and I ain't gotta be like the workhorse workhorse. We already got a uh, Elaire. Yeah. Edwards Alaire. And yep, you yep. Can, you got like a great team where a spread offense where they don't even it's easier to run when you got a spread offense because everybody's trying to guard all these talented wide receivers and a great quarterback. Yeah. That means all the all the damn running lanes going to be open because you can't just crowd the box. Yeah. And he can and catch you, out of the backfield. The pass rush ain't that good. Yeah, he, he's, he's good catching out of the backfield, too. Um, my whole thing is just and I want to ask you this, too, because, you know, we playing fantasy football. The way all this COVID, and we talked about it before, but like it's getting more, it's ratcheting up more now. The way this COVID stuff is impacting the season, it's like all this sounds good, but <laughs> come week eight, they either cancel it because of COVID or niggas start getting hurt because all it takes is for two niggas or to both. get hurt. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, well. Injuries have been horrific and then they've rescheduled about four or five games. I don't even know if these niggas going to give me my points on the back end, if they're going to be like, hey, we give you more points in week five from week seven. We, we don't know yet because they just throwing players around. Yeah. I had yeah. uh, Cam Newton, which I had no ability to actually play. I I, I, I would have beat Smiles if Dak didn't leg didn't explode or if I knew that somebody was going to be sick earlier. Mm-hmm. I would have played Ryan Tannehill, who had a fantastic game, along with Derrick Henry, who's just throwing whole grown men around the field. Oh, my God. So don't. that was the most – Okay, there we go. We just stumbled onto yes, some shit yes, on accident. Yes, yes. He violated nope. that man. First off, Josh Norman, you a mark out here, bro. Man. You a mark out here, bro. You ain't been shit since you left the Panthers. Had a spark when you started, but yeah. now you just... <laughs> <laughs> my he, God. He tossed my it, mans, it's... bro. He tossed them like Jazzy Jeff, bro. Like when they used to bro. throw Jazzy Jeff out ah! the crib. <laughs> <laughs> he violated that That was that crazy. Man. This, he didn't even, like, like, he didn't even stiff arm. He just tossed him literally he was horizontal it was crazy like he was re- re- relaxing on a recliner or some shit you got nieces and, and like, nephews right you ever played like football with them or just play catch or whatever <laughs> and he's just like move or nigga. wrestling just toss they <laughs> yeah, bitches go, <laughs> go on, nigga when i just tell my little cousins go on, nigga and i just mush him in the face like that that's what happened go on. just toss yeah. him around the room and and we were having a discussion in the group chat what's worse getting dunked on or getting just manhandled, stiff armed like that. Y'all, y'all said what you, what you dunked say? on. So let, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I say getting dunked on is worse just because football is 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 it's a brute strength thing, right? And if the nigga bigger than me, he bigger than me, right? I could deal with that. Like it's just a battle of strength. And I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Uh basketball, niggas put nuts on your head, bro. Nah, you're not doing that to me. Whole lot of nuts on your head. Like, nah. <laughs> <it's> not... <laughs> Boom, whole lot of nuts on your head. Nah. 
I, I remember getting kicked out of basketball tryouts because a nigga tried to dunk on me and I just kind of slammed him <laughs> on the ground. Like, you know, I, I, this was before World Star and all this and that. Like, cameras was a big thing, but it's like, bro, you're not doing that. So this nigga just windmilling for no reason. Yeah, he <laughs> he tried, just want to prove a point on you. No, I was a little nigga. He thought that he, oh, I'm just going to jump over this little nigga because, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to show yeah. out. And I just let him know that I'm not the show. Like, Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Neezy here. I wanted to make sure that y'all go and get your Naturally Nate Instant Moisture Duo. That's right. You know, this Instant Moisture Duo can be used on braids, locks, twists, beards, and all of your natural hair. The moisturizer is all natural ingredients. One of our key ingredients, aloe vera. You know, aloe vera is really great for your scalp. And our oil blend is a mixture of the best oils that you can use to promote hair growth and give your hair a good shine and overall just a natural glow. So you're getting two amazing products. Make sure you go to inaudibleruckus.com slash naturally nay. And also you can follow us on Instagram at naturally underscore nay, N-A-E-E. But that see that to to that point. You can't do that's that in why football. I don't, if a nigga wanna move you, he gonna move that ass. But that's not the thing. Everybody in football lifts weights, everybody's around a similar height and weight. So basically, when I'm trying to tackle you, fo- basketball, there is no tackling. So basketball, if you yeah, jump type, and dunk. It depends on what type of basketball you play. Right. Detroit when when you play low basketball, you play in the backyard, nah, this nigga low be throwing Detroit, bows. Detroit he shoots basketball. your ass. Shot me, in the, shot me in my pinky toe, my nigga. No fouls. Call your own fouls. Hey. Look, then you go to call a foul, nigga pull a pistol out the hoodie, be like, hey, nigga. Ka-ching. Those are the old rules. Okay, well, your ball. Make them take them, I guess. <laughs> yep. Goddamn right. Broad Street, nigga. But no, I'm I'm just saying, for football in my in my mind, there isn't like this height or like crazy strength discrepancy. So it's man on man, me versus you. So it's like, oh, we this is all manhood, all aggression. <laughs> you coming at me, I'm coming at you. I'm coming straight at you, and you just remove me like I'm a goddamn mosquito. But line, my nigga. <laughs> li- line ba- linebackers are bigger than like. You know what I'm saying? Like, cornerbacks are smaller than linebackers. So, if it had been a linebacker yes. running up on him, he probably would have still ran over the nigga, but like, it probably would have. It would have. It would have. But, but that's what I'm he saying. wouldn't have it's, been able to just toss the nigga. Even though I've seen Beast Mode just kind of toss like. You're reading my mind man. right now. Because like, every time I've seen Jeremy Shockey, seen uh, Jeremy Marshawn Shockey Lynch, I've seen uh, fucking Peyton Hillis back in the day. I see so many people just destroy and obliterate people and i'm like oh my god yeah. or uh i think it was um Le'Veon bell actually he yeah. caught a pass yeah. and stiff armed uh, uh i think it was a dude from cincinnati stiff armed him to the ground yeah like who do you yeah. just knock that to death i'm like that to me is more embarrassing than being caught off guard and somebody just jumping over me and just kind of dunking i fall over but, or some but, shit. but I'll like say, that looks good i'll say That's this stylish I, i'll say this though right so just think of the names you mentioned right jeremy shockey mm-hmm. was was, was a, 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 a an athletic bigger type of tight end beast mode yep. is is a, is a bigger uh running back Le'Veon mm-hmm. bell is more athletic now he's not small but he's not exactly mm-hmm. the biggest built so even Correct. if he knocked somebody down, I couldn't see him knocking down like a Cam Chancellor, like a bigger safety or like a Bobby Wagner. He probably ran over and knocked down a fucking cornerback. He, I think it was, uh, what's my dudes from Cincinnati who always give people concussions? Oh, uh, perfect. <laughs> yes, oh, shit. I think it was perfect. Never he mind, grabbed man. his like, head and said, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> Never mind, man. I was like, God dang. Never mind. And shit. that's what happens. So, again, I and I'm a big fan of like um Curtis Martin, Marshall Falk. Yeah. Smaller the, the big back, guys. Warwick Dunn type yeah, guys. Shifty yeah, shifty backs that could but could light your ass up when they need to. They can hit that hit stick on your bitch. Yeah. Ass. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I've seen it, so I'm like, that's embarrassing to me because that just all your manhood is removed. You, you somebody can catch you off guard and you fall, but you get tossed around like you I ain't forget, no man. You forgot about my dog, the A train, Mike Allstott. Mike Allstott was that nigga because no. he used to run. That was the water down. boy. That's Bobby Boucher. <laughs> yes. with the ball. 
with the, with the <laughs> fucking neck brace and shit. He put that head down, nigga. Bam! He knocking niggas the fuck out. It was, it was. He was basically, it was, it was usually money every time they was at the goal line and they had to do yep. a fullback dive. You gonna get Yo. in with all stop. All stop would be running there with that damn, uh, you call it fucking neck thing. Yeah. Stone, <laughs> neck Cold roll Steve off. St- Stone Cold Steve Austin. The Peyton Hillis was like the advanced yeah. version of uh, of all stop. Like that's all it was. But they he, both he remind me of Bobby Boucher. Just running the ball. I don't like to show me her boobies, and I like them too. Cardi, uh, Cardi like, B, damn. Cardi B, show me her boobies. <laughs> it looked like salami, and I like them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. I, I, honestly, though, I still say getting dunked on, though, because you, like you said, football is like it's expected. You feel me? Especially if you know, like, like you got people like, like Marshawn. You just knew he's like, man, I know I'm gonna get got. But I gotta, I'm got i going to get them before I get got. And I'm going to just run through a wall. I'm going to run through a motherfucking face. And so you line up across that nigga. I remember he Whoa. got fined one time because when he was lined up, like, I guess it, I'll never forget this game because, you know, I, I fuck with uh, Marshawn. So when he went to the Raiders, the Raiders is my other squad. So he lined up. And somebody, you know, you know how they be talking. Raiders. The Raiders. Uh, you know how they be talking shit at the line of scrimmage. And he just threw the double bird up at the nigga, like, come get some pussy, like, and, and tossed him the middle finger. They hiked the ball, and then my man's broke through the line. 300 pound defensive tackle got him dead to rights. And Marshawn just put his head down and just bam, and just knocked dog the fuck down and went him. Now, he only got about three, four yards out of the shit, but he knocked Whole down. Whole lot of Skittles on your head. Nigga. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I that's a man battle. Like sometimes niggas are just taller than me, or, or there's there's more athletically gifted than me. So there's no even if I was six seven six eight, mm-hmm. I can't stop LeBron. LeBron's gonna dunk on me. Yeah. So I, I don't take that personally. But if me and LeBron is running, I'm running right at LeBron, and this nigga just move me out the way and keep going. <laughs> I'm pissed. Yeah. Like he just made me like a bitch. Nah, I, I, again. Getting dunked on is more like I feel like that's worse, man. Because again, if if he two hundred and what sixty pounds and he he mow you down like you expecting that? Because how much you weigh, you right, man? I'm like two, two something, two yeah, or four. Nigga, yes, you gonna get tossed like Josh Norman. You probably go further. Nigga. Probably, but th- but that's what I'm saying. If I was in the NFL, I ain't gonna be no two or four. All I know, I'm was, be like two two forty, two something. I I didn't play football. Um, but my cousin, so it was just little like you sign up, you get the pads and stuff. So we played in this mm-hmm. little like this little uh, scrimmage or whatever the fuck, right? I did get tossed mm-hmm. around out there a little bit, right? Now, no shame in my game. I'm the littlest one out there. I was expecting to get tossed around. I had heart though, right? On the basketball court, you're not dunking on me, my nigga. I'm snatching niggas out the sky on some Ron Artest shit. You catching balls. Falling out. Yes. You first get, you minute get, of the first quarter. Nigga, you will get punched <laughs> in the nuts. All of that stuff. I'm not playing. And if you want to see me off the court afterwards, we can do that too. Because I remember when I got kicked out of trials. And niggas like, what? And I'm like, hey, do whatever you got to do, my nigga. But you're not dunking on me. Like, you're not about to make so, me into a poster. I, I did play football. So I I remember playing JV and my dad was was in the stands and he, he couldn't make it to all <laughs> my games. Right in his soft, 22 like, soft right in I was like, I'm like, oh shit. I wore number 27 and they had a running quarterback. It was from uh Kirk, which is what, posi- or, what position Kirk. you it play? Was, you were playing DB? I played strong safety. Oh shit. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Was, all right. Boom. The, okay. Strong safety. Me. Number 27. Go. Boom. Whoo. Well, and I was I was light as hell. I was probably weighed like 140 pounds maybe at 6'1. So I'm like I'm the skeleton, but the quarterback was this other black kid that he was like a running quarterback because this is like real Cleveland, real okay. Cleveland team. I'm like, oh shit! So he breaks free and so he's he just running wheels. the whole game. He fast, like yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, man, I ain't about to let this nigga. I seen him run over one of my other teammates. I'm like, oh, I ain't letting this nigga. I'm getting him down. So he breaks through the line and he goes to the sideline. So I'm hawking him down and I tackle him. And this this school is so hood. They don't have fucking grass on the side. They got rocks. Damn. Nigga. <laughs> Damn. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I tackled this nigga and slung him down. And we both landed in the rocks. And I, I pulled up my damn arm. It looked like the Terminator. Terminator 2. Yeah. That shit was just raw. Blood raw and rocks meat. all in your shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't care. I, I did it for, I did it for uh, 
DG had to do it for Donnie Grissom. At least like, you got him. See, see you pops. had that extra motivation. Now, pops. now imagine the flip side to that. Imagine you you took a dive. You tossed my, my bitch ass and then score yes. on me. And, and you the only one that would have been in the rocks. And then, you, <laughs> and then your, your daddy would have walked out. Of, that ain't my son. Right. That ain't my son. <laughs> yeah, ain't no son of mine. Hey, was it? Ain't no Grissom. I don't know that nigga. Yeah, he would have did. See, I believe. <laughs> I wouldn't I, let that shit happen. Now, see, my mom, she used to come out to the games and stuff. I don't think she would have let me get embarrassed like that. She would have been. She, she came me. out, tackled them too. No, nah, hey, no. My mom, I, I played little league baseball one time, and she ran out on the field. <laughs> she was that mom. Hey, how she stormed the mound? Yeah, <laughs> trying nah, to hit hey, my baby. Hey, yeah, no, nah, she did. She did one time. She ran out. Oh my god! And they was like, "Look, you, if you run out here on the field again, man, we're gonna get disqualified." Like <laughs> you run out on the field again, ma'am. You and your son. Are banned from this league. No, hey, we ended up winning a championship that year. That's the only sports trophy that I had. But it was like, mom, we almost didn't win this shit because your overexcitement, <laughs> like, you know, that calm down. Calm down. Oh my god. Uh, that's great. Yeah. But um, all right. <laughs> we about to slide, man. Good pie, man. I feel good about this. Pie. Good shit. Um, that was fun. Give them your socials because we get new listeners every day. And you know, any and you got wait, now we gotta start doing church announcements and shit. Do you got any upcoming right. uh features? Yeah, any shit? upcoming <laughs> pod features? <laughs> Not not this week, guys. I'm, I'm I'm taking it easy. I'm trying to kick it with the fam. Just just relax them. But you can always find me at e underscore r a y the hipster. I am the quasi bad guy, the diet coke of evil, easy e ray, the intellectual thumb thugger, thumb the thugger. Uh, black guy that hikes. Nigga. He's cool and shit. So check me out there and on your local pods. I'm always posting other shit that I'm doing. It's fun. Listen to me. And then my, you know me, Uncle underscore Skeet. You know what I'm saying? AKA Skeet Belichick, take the air out the ball just so I can flex. Uh, <laughs> AKA Skeety Green, AKA Skeet Wick, AKA Skeet Bandicoot, uh, <laughs> Insider. Uh, <laughs> uh, y'all didn't see that. We got to get video so I can see that. I love that. But we're going to cut to some music, man. This next track is by the homie Diego, Rude Boy Diego. It's called Go Baby. And then Freddie J with Beyonce. It's an audible ruckus, motherfuckers. Boom, whole lot of potting on your ass. Fuck around and do life with her, life with her. ice on her, make a wife out of her, spend a check.
check on her. Shit. We ain't like shopping no. We don't put shit on the ground, but you a little watch up. See through you hoes like free clothes. Shit. Ah. Probably hit it twice, worth the free throw. Oh, free my bitch pussy just for me, like a peep hoe. Yeah, for me though. Bitch, you know I get how this ain't cheap though. Let's go, Catch hoes. us whipping out racks like a peep show. Get more, Giving the type of dick to T by his creep fuck. Brody got a job stick with he seek on it. Ooh. Know I he the type of nigga love the sweet. He gon' buy just need a pretty bitch thick up a tea. Yeah. Either way it go, we the beauty and the beast. Yeah. Either way it go, niggas can't fuck with me. Yeah. And if they fuck with you, they can never rest in peace. Yeah. Uncle Ski Tall, and you are listening to the Inaudible Ruckus Podcast. Okay, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on SoundCloud. Okay, you can also go to the website and cop you some merch, inaudibleruckus.com slash shop. Solid dudes, solid topics, solid music. Inaudible Ruckus, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 Beyonce, shoot your club up like it's gunplay Maybe like I'm gunplay, move weight just like I'm rose In a trap, I got that fun sway, watch cameras with that too late Seven day he rested, he got popped down on a Sunday Pop a cherry Sunday, I text her on a dry day Yeah, I do him dirty, run and tell me what them hoes say Fuck him, then I rotate, no Bronco, I got OJ I ain't got no patience, cut him quicker than a low fade uh, She love me, she hate me not Either way it go, I don't love these stats Riding round, jamming, Roddy, reach the backs I just bought a brand new rifle, I got tired of glocks uh, She love me, she hate me not Either way it go, I don't love these stats Riding round, jamming, Roddy, reach the backs I just bought a brand new rifle, I got tired of glocks uh, Send it came like EA, I've been trapping since a prepay Ducking, dodging DAs, low-key in this bitch say We don't do no L's, we live life right the G way I don't need a squad, I ain't got, I got the leeway I ain't really violent, you'll still get spent like a DJ Back just like a DJ and pop it like a new bae If you see me creeping, man, you been not run and tell bae I just bought a chopper, name Kim, get a long K Swear it's been a long day, I'm hustling, but I'm up though Freddy, you been snapping, bro, it's just the quarantine flow Put your pussy lips on live, but you won't get no rack step nah, uh, You can't get no racks, help She love me, she hate me not Either way it go, I don't love these stats Riding round, jamming, Roddy, reach the back I just bought a brand new rifle, I got tired of Glocks uh, She love me, she hate me not Either way it go, I don't love these stats Riding round, jamming, Roddy, reach the back I just bought a brand new rifle, I got tired of Glocks uh, All right, y'all, this has been episode 237 of the Inaudible Ruckus Podcast. Appreciate y'all for joining us. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Amazon Podcasts, because you know they all over the place. Make sure you copy some merch, inaudibleruckus.com slash shop. The Naturally Named Moisturizer Duel is available on there. Uh, shout out to Neezy. Uh, MidnightClubMerch.com. Make sure you support Muse Lux Esthetician Studios, um, Gross Power Washing and Cleaning, and Coach Works Unlimited. Okay? We out here mopping, man. And make sure you check out Smiles, Shot, and Tim on the Uncle Urban Podcast. We got the Hype Bros. We got the Inauta Bros. So shout out to Rico. Uh, Blurred Grounds Podcast. Um, with Free. And like I said, E-Ray's all over the place, man. We moving, man. Got a lot of stuff going on. But um, like my OGs used to tell me, go with God and fuck the rest. It's an audible ruckus. 
motherfucker. I warned you about the banging of the furnace, but you wouldn't listen. The party done. 